is another amazing, so, okay, first let me say, beyond being a master crafter, I've seen this girl craft, <laughs> I've seen this girl sew and make um, Christmas stockings like nobody's business, so on top of all of that crazy talent, she's also a golf enthusiast. She knows so much about the whole golf world. She was educating me before we even got on here because I didn't even know what some of these golf terms and words meant. So she was there to help me through all of this. She is the president of the Gymsec Golf. They have so many golf clubs. I, I can't wait to talk to her. You guys are going to love her. She is also a board member for our ALS Association's Greater Chicago Chapter. So we get her as part of our family all the time. Please welcome Catherine Gemsick. Hello. How are you doing this evening? Good. How are you? I am very good. You are my go-to golf pro. <laughs> <laughs> all, all then we really need to consider finding you a new one. <laughs> I know. <laughs> if you want to learn to play golf, I'm not the one to teach. <laughs> so actually, from what I've heard, the word on the street is that you and your family, you guys are like the first family of golf. You guys are like golf royalty. <laughs> Tell me about your history with your family and golf. Okay, so I am third generation in the golf business. My grandfather started as a caddy and worked his way slowly up in the business. He worked, started as a caddy at Cog Hill in, when it was first built. And he just slowly worked his way up to head pro. And then eventually in 1951, he bought it, um, which had always been his dream to own Cog Hill. Um, and he bought it from the Cog Hill family. I had, so, I um, yes, so we've been there, we've been at Cog Hill since 1951, and it's just it's always, you always get to do something different. It's really exciting. And you, you had that on lockdown. You run that place like a pro. So everyone, if you've never heard, if you're in the state of Illinois, you have to check out Cog Hill because you guys do everything. You can have all kinds of events there. We actually, we're going to talk about that in a second. We actually host some events there. It's beautiful. That course is so incredible. And so speaking of the incredible course, there are some celebrity golfers that have played there, right? So tell me about that. You're looking for the ones when the masters? Yeah. I mean, oh, are there more celebrities? <laughs> so we've actually had four pros that have won the Western Open or the BMW Championship who have also won the masters that have played at Cog Hill. Um, first one would be Ben Crenshaw, followed by Treble. Actually, Tiger's won more than once, so Tiger would be in the middle. And then Trevor Immelman, and then Tiger again and again, and Dustin Johnson, who's last year's champion. Oh, so yeah, a lot of celebrities. And you've actually played with them. You got to go play I have played with Dustin Johnson, yes. I had the privilege of playing in the Western Golf Association Pro-Am. And I played with Dustin Johnson, who is just very down to earth, a great guy. He talked to you from the first hole all the way through the 18th hole. So he was very engaging and a lot of fun to play with. Oh, so, okay, what was it like playing with the pro? You know, you get real nervous because I don't hit it like they do. <laughs> so um, for me, it's also, I always get nervous. I want to make sure I hit it out well off the first tee. Because if you screw up later on, it's okay. If you, they get a little worried when you screw up on the first hole. Ah, you hit, I didn't. But that's the most nerve wracking is your first shot, I think. Okay. Did you beat him? No, it was a <laughs> scramble. <laughs> Not a scramble, but it was a best ball. So he's one of your partners. Everyone on the, everyone in the group goes and whoever has the best hole is the score they take. Uh, okay, so then you had the best partner. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> I had a very good team, yes. That is so perfect. So you have this amazing golf history and you played with some of literally the best of the best golfers. How did you get involved with ALS? How did those paths cross and how'd you find your way to us? Um, actually in two avenues. One, we've had a couple of employees who have had ALS, which, which originally brought me to the golf outing um, that was being hosted at Pine Meadow at the time. 
uh, it was just challenging to watch one of our employees at that time who was so active. He was a golfer. He, he worked 40 hours a week. He was involved with his family, just slowly lose his ability to go out and move and communicate. And then his granddaughter worked for us as well at the time. Um, and hearing her side, um, that was my first experience. Um, and then ironically, I met Julie Sharp, um, who's your executive director um, at a golf convention at the Golf Inc. conference in Florida. Um, just strange, you know, we ended up on a flight and by the time I got off the flight, I, I was on the golf committee. <laughs> <laughs> We you sat next to, to each other on the plane, and I was on a golf committee when I got off. And so that's how I got involved. And to see the people and how much they care and how they come out year after year, and it's about getting together and supporting those who aren't there anymore. And it's amazing how many families um, continue to support the organization because of the so much appreciated all the advice, support, and resources that they received from the Chicago chapter. Um, we actually have a past employee that is currently living with ALS. And um, she was at the golf outing this year. And she came, the ALS brought her out. Um, she came out and had lunch with my father, ironically, um, Frank Jemsik, the owner of Cog Hill, and they just got to you know, sit there and talk and it gave her a chance to get out in an environment that was safe. You know, people also experienced and knew what she was going through. Um, but it was real, you know, it's challenging to watch another person who was so active, played golf three times a week, worked 40 hours a week, you know, she used to um, run around making sure everyone's, all the golf outings that their barbecues were all going well and all the food was resupplied and they were all getting served. So it's just challenging um, for them and it's patience. It's, it's so hard to just watch that. Like Mike said it earlier, I mean, that seems to be the common story. It always happens to the active, amazing, incredible people in the world. This just creeps up and just tries to come at them, but we're not letting it happen. We're going to keep fighting. So I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm annoying everybody, but I'm not going to stop saying it enough. Donate because donating is making a difference and it's changing lives. So make sure you find that link again, donate to help people like Mike, to help Catherine, to, to help your employees, to help all the people that are battling this nasty, nasty disease. I love that golf. Ironically, I would have never put these two together, but I love that. Golf brought you to us. Such a small world. Yes. And so you, you mentioned it a couple times. So you guys are, are the host now. You're the host course for our ALS Classic. Tell everybody about that. So the ALS Classic is hosted in the second week of September. Um, we, they actually sold out last year. So I recommend everyone start signing up early, especially if you want to bring groups or corporate events you know, entertain your corporate corporates for that way. Um, we play on course number two, the ravines course. Um, some players also play on dubs. And last year, even with the pandemic, they had the largest turnout ever. And in order to make sure it was a safe environment, they even staggered the, um, they did two shotgun starts and fed people at different times in different locations to make sure that everyone stayed in a safe environment and everyone could get out and um, experience and still have the safety at the same time. And it was, um, the staff really took a lot of time and effort to make sure that everyone safety needs was met. I'm glad you said that because I probably would have forgot to bring it up. I was at the golf tournament last year and yeah, you guys went above and beyond to really pull this off. If it wouldn't have been for you, we wouldn't have been able to pull this off. You guys made everybody safe. From what I, nobody got sick afterwards. So what you guys were doing worked. <laughs> you guys were pandemic friendly and kept everybody safe. So that's a, that's a huge deal, especially nowadays. So thank you. 
So I think they'll keep in, you know, they're going to keep some of the things. They're going to try to have two courses in the afternoon this year again. Um, hopefully they'll keep the morning course as well and then do the lunch and the dinner afterwards. So that'll be um, a good experience for everybody. And you guys, you do have to, Catherine's right, it fills up really fast. So make sure you guys sign up for that very quickly because you don't want to miss it. There's so much fun stuff happens. And even you, you are so gracious enough, you and your father and your family, you, you guys donate a lot of great stuff to the auction. So there are so many fun prizes that people can win and bid on. And it's just an awesome event. Do you have a favorite ALS association memory that comes to your mind off the bat? Favorite maybe memory with Julie or with someone that you want to share with us? Um, I put you on the spot. I just thought of this. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> I guess, you know, when we were out at Cantini a few years ago and um, I ran into the current employee you know, one of our past employees that's still currently living with ALS and I hadn't seen her in so long and I was so surprised to see her. Um, and at the time I didn't know that she had been diagnosed with ALS and she was out there with her friends and um, it was a great chance to see her and talk to her and, you know, she did the whole walk. Um, they pushed her in her wheelchair um, and so I think that was, you know, I went just to donate my time and however I could help. And I was surprised that I just happened to run in. It just shows how it's a very small world and, um, you know, we just need to continue to take care of each other. Yeah. And we're so happy. And Julie 99, you're so right. Catherine, you and your whole family, you guys have been such a huge support to the community. So we're so happy. Thank you for everything you do, for everything your family does. And I'm so, I'm so glad you're a part of this. I'm so glad I can, I'm gonna have to come out and you're gonna have to actually teach me how to play golf. <laughs>